the juices started flowing. And my obsessive nature of wanting to know all the minutia of this sort of science. All my customers know what I do during the day. I don't know if they think it's creepy or not. My day job is I'm a full-time forensic pathologist. In my career, I've done well over 6,000 autopsies. And on the side, I'm also a knife maker. A good doctor makes some of the best knives in America. It's uh, uh, disgustingly, frighteningly sharp. Ha! This is the den. This is the nerve center. I'm Dr. Steven Pastelnik. I am the chief medical examiner for Fort Bend County, and I'm also the knife maker for Houston Edgeworks. Houston Edgeworks is my knife making business. My customer base is mostly enthusiast cookers. That's probably about 60% of my customer base. The other 40% are professional chefs. It started back in 2013. My cooking was getting better and I found the limitations of the knives that uh, I had been using. I wanted better knives for myself. I wanted better knives for my cooking. And the light went off. It's like, what knife do I use most in my life? It's my autopsy knives. Why don't I make a better autopsy knife? So I got with a local knife maker here in Houston. Then we started designing and I asked him, would you show me how to make a knife? And he said, sure, I'll show you how to make a knife. But that's like your first rock of crack. One of our star chefs in, here in Houston, Chris Shepard, there was a piece on him in the uh, Houston Chronicle, and, and it was him standing there with two crossed knives in front of him. And I said, that's a chef that might like my knives. And I walked into Underbelly before they started serving, and I said, Chef Shepard, I make knives. I'm here in Houston. I, I understand you like Japanese knives. And he looked at him, he said, make me one of those. And then it just freaking exploded. This is where we obsess over handle material. It's just regular oak, but it's 5,000 years old. Don't be afraid of pink, purple, and magenta. It looks really good on a knife. So this is actually a 40,000-year-old mammoth tooth. I, I try to make suggestions, but my biggest suggestion is whatever you want. Don't buy what you already have. You're gonna get a custom knife. Make it a custom knife. My style is super high alloy, ultra edge holding steels. That's what thrills me, is the challenge of working with a hard steel that other people just don't wanna work with because they're so difficult to work with. You know, my fingers, my wrists, my elbows, they're killing me at the end of the day. If it's harder for me to make, it resists deformation, it resists dulling, it resists chipping for you, the consumer. Thus far, I've made approximately 200 custom orders, and I've got another close to 300 orders on my books right now. This is the book, and this is the waiting list. Here's one for a 210 millimeter stainless Damascus. I tell people the waiting list is a minimum of five years. I'll, I'll be happy to add you to the wait list. We can discuss the knife when I get to you on the list in five years. Do you still want to be there? Absolutely. This is my side hustle, not my, my, my full-time job. So if it was for my full-time job, I'd want to turn out numbers, higher volume, get 20 knives made at a time. I do one knife at a time. And I put all the effort into making them just beautiful. So this is a billet steel, and this is a, this comes from Germany. This piece of steel is $1,000. So this will make three knives, so three, 300 bucks a knife. So I, I price my knives based on the type of steel and the length of the blade, and whether any other add-ons that they want. For a 210 millimeter blade, the prices go 600, 800, and 1,000 for the super steels. For the 240, 250 millimeter blade, it starts at 750, then 1,000, then 1,250 for the super steel. With Houston Edgeworks, I'm probably making an extra 20, 25,000 a year. Pre in pre-orders right now, I'm pushing close to 275,000. I'll pay some bills that we have, stuff like that. You know, buy Hanukkah presents for the kids. As my side hustle, this doesn't pay the bills, but it keeps me sane. Now we're going to go into one of our morgues where we would do the uh, post-mortem examination. I'm the chief medical examiner for Fort Bend County, which means that we are responsible for certifying the cause and manner of death of people who die under suspicious, unnatural, and unlawful circumstances. The pathologists, we, we sort of operate in a black box. We're sort of the mystery. Very, very few clinical physicians know what we do. The public oftentimes doesn't know what we do. Most forensic pathologists toil in anonymity and obscurity until they trot us out of our morgues and plunk us down in the witness chair in court 
and then maybe there'll be a news photographer there, and then our ugly little photographs will end up in the newspaper. But we then go crawl back into the morgue, go back to our bodies, go back to doing our work quietly for the legal system and the justice system and stuff like that. So notoriety, no, never thought of it. I had no clue it was gonna to lead to this place in the culinary world. So here we are, it's inside our cooler. This, is, this cooler is kept at 34 degrees Fahrenheit. We built extra shelving in here because of COVID and we were getting kind of full, so we had to make preparations to deal with a overwhelming number of bodies. I have some uh, pig kidneys that we'll be slicing uh, here with the knives that I use for my regular autopsies. So I would make a cut like this, and then I would come in and make slices like this to see if there's a tumor or anything else that's significant, and that's it. The best cooks amongst all medical professionals, always the pathologists. We don't eat the deceased, okay? We don't do that. But we think of the world in terms of food. We are an organ and tissue-based medical specialty, uh, just like chefs are an organ and tissue-based culinary specialty. It makes me a better knife handler at home when I handle knives so frequently here. All my customers know what I do during the day. Uh, Andrew Zimmern thinks it's cool because he does an animal anatomy and I do human anatomy. So here's Jatila using one of my knives on one of his videos that uh, Andrew, who does uh, Binging with Babish, he was gonna give that to John Favreau. His knives are like his children to them. He texts me regularly to get updates on like, how's it, how's it performing? He loves his knives, he loves the chef community, um, and he wants to make sure that people who work with knives have the sharpest, best steel they can get their hands on. Well, hello. Look Mr. Gang. Weissman. Today, Josh Weissman is coming over. He's a customer I'll be making uh, two knives for. Like, I, I remember seeing this is actually one of the first knives I ever saw from you. This is the OG. Seventh or tenth knife I've ever made. The OG knife. It's super light, too, and like exactly. really well balanced. I've known about Houston Edgeworks for a long time, actually. I always saw him as like a legendary knife maker because so many people have spoken good things about his work. I've always seen it as a coveted sort of cult thing. Yeah, 100%. So what, uh, more of a uh, more of a Wusthof sort of uh, European thing or more of a Gyoto Japanese thing? Definitely Gyoto Japanese, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That looks great. That looks wonderful. This is this is the design that you keep in mind while we move over there. Ah. Uh, and then you go paw through everything. Okay, okay. then that's helpful. Okay, okay, let's do that. This is what's called swamp wood. What else do we have? Uh, spalted tamarind. Tamarind? Yeah. Like as in as in the like, the, like the fruit the, the fruit yes exactly yeah. so I've got a whole bunch of different mammoth teeth that have been dyed what those are forty thousand year old is, that, is this mammoth even legal I'm a fanboy of good chefs and if I get to hang out with them that's my entree to the culinary world the only thing I know is chutzpah and I know that I'm pretty sure that's balls correct mushuga is that also balls eventually we'll be in a larger house it's gonna have room for a workshop. Once I have more actual floor space, then I can start taking in an assistant, maybe even teaching classes. My vocation is forensic pathology. My avocation is knife making.